Hey everybody, Mike Wodinski here, and today I've got a great video on how to remove halos and artifacts in Photoshop. But before we get started, don't forget to check out naturemike.com for some great how-to articles, in-field workshops, and virtual post-processing sessions. Okay, so let's dig in. First, I'd like to talk about why halos form in the first place. It's usually a result of over-processing or over sharpening or a combination of the two. But sometimes you just can't help it, they just appear. And for when that happens, I have a quick little technique that's gonna help you get rid of them in most cases. So the first thing I need to do is actually create some halos here. So a good way to do that is to take the highlights all the way down, and if I zoom in, it looks like there's some faint ones starting to form, and I can really exaggerate them if I take the clarity slider and just bump it all the way up. Now, this edit looks pretty terrible. Your images should never be this crunchy, but for the sake of halo purposes, I wanted to do this just so I can show you how to get rid of these, and I get some more over here. Now, the reason this works is because the sky is lighter than the rock, and you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a moment. So we have this photo, let's go ahead and bounce into Photoshop. So I'm gonna control click, edit in, and edit in Photoshop. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop, and now it's time to get rid of those halos. And it's actually really easy to do. We need to come over to our healing brush, and right now I have the spot healing brush selected. And I'm just gonna click and hold on that until I see the healing brush, and I'm gonna select that. Now at the top of our screen, we see this menu bar. And right now our blend mode is set to normal. We're actually gonna change that to darken. We wanna make sure our source is set to sampled and then we wanna sample all layers. And the next thing I'm gonna do is come down to our layers window and I'm gonna add a new layer because I don't wanna be destructive. I don't wanna be painting on my actual pixel based layer. I'm gonna create a layer on top of it and paint onto that. But since we have sample all layers selected, whenever I sample, it's gonna sample even this bottom layer, even though we're not actually painting on it. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in, Command Plus. And we wanna be fairly precise here. You don't have to be, stress yourself out about, you know, staying the lines too much, but you wanna brush about the same size as your edge, and then you just wanna trace the edge. So I'm gonna shrink this brush down to about this size. And since we have the regular healing brush selected, I need to sample from somewhere in the scene. So essentially what I wanna do is just sample along the edge here and just trace the edge up like so. So I'm gonna hold the Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC, click once to sample, and then I'm gonna hit the mouse down and you'll see this crosshair. That crosshair is telling me where I'm sampling from, and I'm just gonna go ahead now and start tracing the edge of the rock. And you can see that that halo is starting to disappear. And even though I'm going into the rock, it's really not affecting the rock at all. Now, I gotta watch that crosshair. If I start to hit, you know, come into the rock, I'm gonna have some issues. So I'll resample up here, I'll hold Option and click, and then just start tracing again. And just really just trace the whole edge of the rock like this. Now where you run into trouble is if your rock or whatever subject you have becomes close to the same luminosity as your sky or lighter, in which case you won't be able to use this method because you're actually gonna be darkening whatever's here and it's just gonna be blurry and it's not gonna look good. But whenever your subject is darker than the sky, and in most cases it is, this is a great technique to get rid of halos. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this real quick. Okay, so that was fairly painless, and if I turn the layer on and off, you can see kind of what we did the before and after. Now, it might be a little subtle on the video, so I'll zoom in. Now, some people might not even notice that those halos exist, and you could call this pixel peeping, but at the end of the day, I know they're there, and if they're there, it's gonna drive me crazy. 
And removing halos can be the difference between having a professional shot and a mediocre shot. Once you're done, make sure you go ahead to the blend mode and change that back to normal. That way the next time you use the healing brush, it's working the way you expect it to. Now, if you ever have a situation where your subject is lighter than your sky and you still have a halo there, there's really not much you can do using the healing brush, but you could try and use either the uh, clone stamp or even just a regular brush just to kind of brush in any area that you're having issues with the healing brush with. It's not ideal, but it can work in a pinch. Okay, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. And of course, as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment on this video, and check out naturemike.com. See you in the next video.